Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Sunil and uh, welcome to my channel 3D Archestops. In this uh, tutorial or in this video, I am going to show all the settings and the reasons why I used all the settings on my post process volume so that you can get a hang or you can get an idea of how to use a post process volume inside your architectural scene. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be helpful for everyone or I'm not sure if it's going it's uh, helpful for everyone or not but uh, I thought to make the I, I thought I should make this video so I am making it so without any further ado let's get started so first of all what I did inside this post process volume is white balance the default white balance is 1500 if i switch it off you can see some blue thing there right here but i switched it from 6500 to 7000 to give it a yellowish tint all over because the sunlight uh, the sunlight is playing a major part the lighting source inside the project and the sunlight is generally yellowish type or something so I have to use 7000 or 7000 as the volu value here. So after this uh, white balance, uh, what I did is I went inside the global palette or settings, whatever you call this. And there is a, a setting which is called contrast. And in contrast, I put a value of 1.15 and the default value is 1.0. Uh, to make the things a bit more contrasty or th you can or you know what a contrast uh, is used for see I you can see the difference I will try to toggle all the settings so that I can show you the difference of the settings so I use the contrast here and then after I went into gamma and in gamma also I put value 1.15 and I will switch it on and off to show you the effect of the gamma and then I went inside the gain and I also use the gain here if I switch all three of these you see how this thing how the scene will look so I will switch it on all the those three settings and after that I went inside shadows and then I gave 1.1 in the gain for the shadows I don't know if it's making too much of effect but when I was doing the post process thing I thought uh, I thought like giving gain 1.1 in the shadows but it's not compulsory you can uh, try yourself uh, whether it uh, you want to give it or not and then I went inside misc and here is the very important thing in mix uh, color uh, let me uh, color grading LUT intensity I put point one instead of one the one is default so you can see that it's one but i you have to put this value very low never go beyond 1.1 1 .1 and then put a lute here which uh, i have put the uh, put the link of this uh, i um, oh, okay i will put the link of this lut bleach uh, bypass whatever you call it inside my description of the video and once you switch off you can see the difference of the loot it makes a, it makes the scene a little bit uh, subtle subtle or whatever you call it and then i have for slope i have given 0.95 instead of 0.88 and then i went inside chromatic abrasion I do like uh, giving chromatic abrasion a bit in all of my projects because I like this effect so much. So if you can, if you switch it off, you can see a very little difference. But it does. Uh, I just prefer using chromatic abrasion a very slightly effect, a slight effect. It should not be too prominent because it may ruin your scene definitely. So make it quite uh, less or less intense, intensive and then i bloom yes bloom you so you can i i will show a difference of the bloom on this project see 
this is the bloom effect if i switch to a standard this bloom is not so impressive or doesn't look nice but i have given the intensity to 0.3 and change the bloom type to convolution and once i change the bloom type to converse convolution convolution then it looks quite quite good so i change like that you can experiment on your projects by yourself maybe some different settings will work for your projects and exposure compensation i have put 0.5 i always try to you see the diff you can see the difference of exposure compensation in the uh, file and as usual you know my minimum brightness and maximum brightness are always fixed and in other projects i generally tend to keep my minimum brightness and maximum brightness after the com final lighting to 0 0.5 0 0.5 but this project 0 0.75 and 0 0.75 as a minimum maximum brightness was enough so i had to put 0 0.75 and then in image effect i have put vignetting see if vignetting is default 0.4 but uh, i think it, it that is that tends to be quite intense so i just always put my vignette to 0.2 on every project and then i have put again jitter and then gain in grain jitter and then grain intensity so you can see a bit little amount of grain inside my post process volume in the scene uh, i have used this grain jitter and grain intensity for the first time on, on any of my project but uh, on this project i don't know why i liked it a bit so i just kept it like that and in the ambient occlusion i have put the intensity to one and i have decreased the radius to 20 in advance I have uh, given fade out uh, radius to, to 20,000 and then quality from 50 to 100 and the static friction I have given to 1 and then in real world I have checked it out but I have not given the I have not checked it out so just forget this uh, radius in world but if I do try to use uh, real world uh, radius in lots of my projects but the, on this one I didn't uh, like put it on so i just didn't use it then again in a spin a screen space reflection i have put the intensity to 100 quality to 100 and max roughness to one and this misc screen percentage when i render a scene of cinematic whenever i do a cinematic render of uh, any project i just go inside a screen percentage and then i go and make it 150 to make all the anti-aliasing as nice as possible so to increase to reduce the anti-aliasing in the, your final cinematic renders you have to uh, increase the end screen percentage from 100 to maybe 150 or maybe 160 or 200 is even better but if you put it 200 then your graphic card needs to be very high quality or very powerful to render that cinematic video if you are rendering inside rendering in 4k but if you are rendering in full HD 920 and 1280 or 1010 1080 then it's not a big deal it can render a normal decent graphic and also can render it but if you are rendering in 4k never exceed 150 or maybe 125 will be also better very good settings for the cinematic video and obviously uh, this post process volume is enabled and unbound it's unbounded so here i tried uh, in this video i tried to explain all the settings which i have used as on my post process volume to make this scene look as good as possible and now i will try to switch off the post process and see how scene looks see you can see the scene looks like this the default lighting is like this of the scene but when i switch on my post process with all those settings which i have mentioned in this video then it goes from this to this so uh, you can also try these settings on your projects and see if these settings does make a difference on your projects 
but uh, i try to use these types of setting or maybe similar to these settings on every projects and i think i it goes very well for my projects and i wanted to uh, let you know the settings which i use on my project post process volume for every projects whether it is interior or exterior so i thought make a tutorial or make a video of my post process setting on this project so thank you for watching my video and please subscribe and like my videos and please do comment if you want any specific tutorial or if you are facing any problem in your projects and i will try my best to help you and make videos for you guys so that you can learn from me uh, by then i will meet you in the next video by then you just take care and have a nice day bye bye